Hey, it's the Golden Math Lady. I'm here today to give you a walkthrough of the Saxon Geometry textbook and curriculum. I get questions about this all the time, so we're going to show you what textbooks there are, even tell you whether or not this is a curriculum that you should be taking. Do you need to take it? We're going to get all those questions answered, so let's get started. One of the first questions I get is, do I even need to take geometry as a whole year course? Because I thought geometry was integrated into Saxon math. Well, let's talk about it. So when John Saxon, the author of Saxon math, wrote the higher level math books, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Advanced Math, he integrated geometry into each of those books. The idea was that it was close enough to the math that was in algebra that was being presented, and it could be presented alongside that. So some people, to get their geometry credit, just do Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Advanced Math. Okay? Other people say, you know, I really want an entire year just of geometry. In fact, Houghton Mifflin, the publisher, when they purchased Saxon Math, said, you know, we need a geometry book. You know, there's, they work with schools. Schools have a whole year of geometry. They need a book. So they created this geometry textbook, okay? So first question answered, was it written by John Saxon? It was not. He actually had passed away already when that, this book was published. So it wasn't written by him. It is written in the same style of a spiral review that we know Saxon math, you know, to be, you know, famous for. Um, and some people also ask me, well, is it Common Core? And my answer to that is it, it was published in 2009. Common Core became popular in 2010. So technically this is not marketed as a Common Core textbook. I will, however, say that some of the concepts of uh, behind Common Core that are, you know, using more real life examples are present in this book. So you'll see in the practice sets a lot more word problems and logic based problems which is one of the tenets of Common Core. Okay, so you really have to make a decision. Do you want to do the integrated route, do Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Advanced Math to get your geometry credit? Or do you want to take a whole year just to do this geometry textbook? You know, it really is up to you. One thing I want to add that's different about the geometry textbook is that I find that it has more geometric proofs. Do y'all remember proofs when you were in school? Yeah, it was a large part of geometry. I would say that um, the integrated method has some proofs, not a lot of proofs in my opinion, but this geometry textbook is full of proofs. You know, I would say the first third of the book is mostly proofs. So if you want your student to have experience with proofs, that logic building and thinking through how we get from step A to step B, um, this textbook might be one for you. Let's go through the books that are needed. There are three of them. So here's the first one. It's a hefty one. It's called Saxon Geometry, and it's a hardcover. It's thick, and this is the only edition of this textbook. Okay, let's actually, let's actually verify that, you know, put my glasses on. Yep, 2009 is the printing of it, so there it is. All right, then we also have the solutions manual. The solutions manual goes through all of the solutions, as you'll see, of the problem sets. So we'll take a look at that. And then there's also something called the homeschool testing book. And we'll also walk through this one as well. Let's talk about the student textbook. So the student textbook, it's for students, but it's also for the teachers and for parents who are teaching because everybody uses the same book at this part in Saxon Math. 120 lessons. There's also 12 investigations and 15 labs. And those investigations or labs are just a bit more hands-on exercises a deeper dive into some of the topics okay now each lesson is broken down into four sections there's a warm-up there's new concepts there's lesson practice and there's the practice let's take a look at those four sections the warm-up it's exactly what it sounds like it generally starts off with a vocabulary question which becomes even more important in geometry because there's so many vocabulary words and then there's like two or three other problems just to get your mind going of things that you've previously learned. The warm-up. The new concept. This is where we're learning today's new math material. And there's three ways you could go about it. As a parent educator or a teacher, you could be the one who actually teaches the lesson to the student. Or you could give the textbook to the student and have them teach themselves. Or you could use Nicole the Math Lady videos. I have recorded every single one of these lessons. 
and your student can just go click on the video and see how the lesson uh, is taught and it is taught in the same fashion that it is in the textbook. Now, I do wanna say that these videos, these are the higher level math, so these videos generally range, I would say around 15 minutes. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're longer. But again, these higher level math, uh, you know, levels, concepts, it just takes a while to teach them, so just be prepared. Next is the lesson practice. And these are just a few practice problems that are on today's lesson. So students can go in, do those problems, and just make sure they got the day's material. Okay, now, uh, I know that for some students, you know, they want to work out the problems. There's not a lot of space in this book, so I recommend having a spiral notebook that you keep to the side and you put all of your math work in that notebook. I also, on my uh, site, offer an additional video where we walk through some of the practice problems. I give them, like, different numbers so they can get a little bit more practice before they do it on their own. It is an optional video. Some students love it and use it. Others find they don't need it. Some will just use it as extra practice during the summer. But for those students who just would like a little bit more, like, how do you do that? And, like, let me walk through it with you. That video provides that for them. The last part is just called the practice. I know, lesson practice, practice, they're just trying to confuse us, but it's called the practice. And they're generally around 30 practice problems um, that are spiral review in nature, meaning some practice problems are from today, some are from yesterday, some are from last week, like they're constantly spiraling back to previous lessons, okay? And why is that a good thing? Well, we know in math, everything builds upon everything else. So this just gives them a chance to re revisit some of that information that they've seen because, you know, they're going to see it again. We want to make sure it's keeping fresh in their mind. Now I'm going to put on my little handy dandy glasses here so I can see something on the page. Yes, it works. Okay, what I was looking for is I wanted to see, as in other Saxon math books, there is a number that is printed underneath the problem number. It's in parentheses. That number tells you where this problem came from, what lesson it previously came from, or like is there a standard in math, you know, a postulate or something that we're using. It gives the student a little bit of direction. That way, if they're having problems with this problem, they can go back to that lesson and reread it or rewatch it in the case of my videos and get a little help, a little assistance on where to go next. This leads me to tell you about our online grading platform at Nicole the Math Lady. We have students, if you have online grading as part of your package, they can go in and put their answers and we'll automatically grade them. So they'll know, is it correct or is it incorrect? And if it's incorrect, we'll give them a chance to retry the problem. We'll also put that number that I told you about that's in parentheses, it's in, the, in there as a video. So they could just click on the link and the window opens up and they can rewatch the video if they need some extra help. I find that students, when they get something wrong, they, they really do want to correct it. They don't want to leave points on the table. So this is teaching them a valuable skill on how to self-correct a problem when they know it's incorrect. Okay? Now, as a parent, you know, we don't have time all the time to constantly stay on top of some of the grading. That's what I hear from folks. So it sends you an email report, and you can see exactly how your student did on every single question. That way, if you think you need to intervene and say, wait, wait, let's go take a look at this, you have the information that you need. So let's just talk about time, because in this textbook, I find, you know, we're again, we're dealing with the higher level concepts. People are used to sex and math lessons, maybe taking 45 minutes to an hour. I find that's still possible for some students, but for other students, it does creep above an hour. Maybe it's an hour, hour 15. Even for other students, it might be an hour and a half, particularly when you get to some of the proofs that are included in geometry. So just a word about time. It does take longer than some of the lessons that they did when they were younger. There's just a few more goodies that are in this textbook. They're at the back. So they have a skills bank, which just pulls out some of the major skills that are necessary for geometry and spends a little bit more time on them. Um, they also have, I'm going to flip to it here, they have a properties and formulas section, right? So sometimes we need formulas easily at our fingertips. We have those. There's also the third category is like a listing of all the theorems and postulates that we use a lot, particularly in our proofs. And then we have a nice glossary at the end, which is like a pretty thick section, actually, because, you know, geometry is full of vocabulary words, and you're going to find them in that glossary. Second book that you need is the Solutions Manual. Solutions Manual takes you through the problem sets and gives you detailed explanations, step-by-step -step walkthroughs of how you came to your answers. 
And I just find that, you know, in geometry, having an answer is just not enough. You need to know how you got to that answer. So Solutions Manual is something every student needs. The third book is the homeschool testing book. Here you'll find your testing schedule of when to administer test. You'll find the actual test to give your student. I find there's not really enough space for your student to work on that test, so just have them do it in a spiral notebook or some other paper. And then they actually have the answers, the walkthroughs of the test are also in the testing book. So everything test related comes in one book when it comes to geometry. And that's it. That is a walkthrough of the geometry textbook. As I said, it's really up to you to decide, do you want to take a full year with this textbook and just do geometry full of all of those proofs and, you know, geometry problems? Or are you more interested in taking the other route, which is the integrated geometry that's a part of Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Advanced Math, okay? It gives you geometry, doesn't do as deep a dive on the proofs as I find in this geometry textbook, but you know, it really depends on your student and where your st you think your student's um, going to end up and what they're going to need to move forward. Do they need a heavy geometry focus? Do they not? That's up to you. Okay, that's all I have. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>